welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So I'm really excited to be joined by today's guests. Today we are talking about the new film American Dreamer with one of its stars, Michelle Milet. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Michelle. Thank you for having me. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So to kind of start things off for American Dreamer, what was it about this project that made you kind of go, I, I really want to be a part of this film? Well, initially when I received the script um, written by Ted Malfi, uh, before I'd even writ- read it, I was excited because I'd worked with him previously on El Camino Christmas and I was familiar with his writing abilities already. And I know how talented he is and how you know great of a storyteller he is. So I was excited kind of right off the jump and then reading it I thought it was such a touching story really poignant um without being like preachy and I just thought it was a smart approach to these kind of concepts of um, materialism and wanting outside of like what is attainable and what are we willing to do to get what we quote unquote want um and then the love story ultimately between Peter Dinklage and Shirley MacLaine's characters that I thought was so tender and sweet. And yeah, so the writing really is what sold me. And then obviously the casting. <laughs> yeah, as <laughs> I, I say, what an incredible in- cast. Yeah, yeah. So your your character in the film, she she causes a little bit of you know trouble throughout throughout the movie. Um, yeah. how were you able to connect with her? And was there any aspects of the character that that kind of challenged you as an actor at all? Or she was a bit of a challenge because she is a person who presents this mature, you know, academic kind of sure of herself persona, but in actuality, she um, is a bit childlike. And when she doesn't get what she wants, she, her responses are very over the top and kind of unrealistic. And it's okay to have emotions around something, but her choices of presentation I found really interesting and um and quite funny (laughs) so I think just figuring out a way to toe the line between this person who has um, a hard time with boundaries and a hard time hearing no and who she is and why she is that way was was fun for me to go into yeah I loved the the comedy in this film I I definitely like I tend to kind of lean more towards like darker comedies. So I loved some of the bits in this film had me cracking up for sure. I got to watch the movie the the other day. You got to work with, you know, Peter Dinklage on the movie, you know, specifically for a couple scenes. Can you just talk about the experience of working with him and and what did you kind of learn from that experience? Well, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. So I was very excited to work with him and meet him. And um, he's very disarming he's um super warm but he's not uh how do i explain it it's not like he's putting it on you know like it's it's authentically just himself and um he didn't feel like this kind of full of shit actor guy that you could expect he would be given how much of you know a career he's had he was really down to earth and approachable and um he's obviously such a talent so working with him was, you know, a delight and just watching him. Um, I felt like I was learning the whole time. And that, that must make it really nice, you know, for someone like you to being a big fan of him and kind of going into it, like wondering like how, you know, how is this going to be? And he just ends up being like a, a great, you know, human being like overall. Yeah. And really funny too. Like has a wicked sense of humor. He really gets it. Um, yeah. He was just, he was, he was great. And uh, has, has an amazing presence and um, you know, especially in the first scenes where we're all in the lecture hall and he's kind of just performing these monologues for myself and the crew and a bunch of extras and on camera, which is like quite a high pressure situation. And um, he was amazing and he kind of took time to make everybody in the room feel acknowledged. And I thought that was really above and beyond. Which is always, yeah, which is super important. Like I said, I think just makes it easier for for everyone, you know, like on the crew when you have someone who's able to go above and beyond for everybody else. Totally. When the film, Phil, he pretty much gives up everything to, you know, get this house that he like so desperately wants. Um, Has there been anything in your life that you had to give up everything, you know, like Phil and and what, uh, because you wanted it so bad? Not quite as extreme. Um, I would probably make different choices than Phil if I was in his shoes. But 
I, I do think sometimes you have to take big risks for a big reward. Mm -hmm. I would say being across the country or moving down to the States, um, in my like earlier career and like away from home and kind of everything I knew in my community, that's sort of the biggest leap of faith that I've made for my, uh, personal gain, I suppose. Um, and those are always like great risks to take as long as it's like at least a little bit well thought out. Phil, I don't know if his situation was as great of a leap, but, but yeah, I've definitely made some big moves for sure. I was, gonna, I was curious if you were going to say something along the, the lines of acting. Cause I mean, getting into acting, I mean, that's a, a big decision. <laughs> Oftentimes, like you said, like having to like move across the country to, you know, to go to an LA or something like that is a big, yeah. a lot of things, a lot of decisions go into that. Yeah, it's definitely comes with a lot of risks. There's no question. Um, everyone who works in our industry, it's like, it's can be really high reward. Um, if you love acting, if you're creatively inspired, it's worth it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, there's definitely some um, sacrifices that you have to make. Definitely security being one of them. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. This was, uh, it, it was Paul Dector's uh, first, you know, feature debut. Can you just talk about the experience of working with him and help helping bring his vision to life for the movie? Yeah. I mean, ag again, it was so long ago and um, I was only on the set for like two weeks and in indie films, you only have as much time and budget as is allowed. And it's usually pretty like, it's a pretty fast pace. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, and yeah, Paul, he, he seems like a really lovely person. Um, he was very, uh, like his communication skills with actors was really nice to be around. Um, he made me feel comfortable and, and yeah, he, he seemed really focused and uh, knew what he wanted, which was good. Sometimes I feel like it's, it must be nice to kind of work on some of these, the smaller like indie films though, too, because, the set, I feel like can just feel a little bit more like intimate where sometimes you're working on these bigger projects and there's so many different things, you know, people running around doing all these different things. Do you, do you enjoy getting to work on these little indies, you know, like every now and then too? Yeah. I mean, and, and indie, especially when the script is good and people are inspired by it. Um, it, it, yeah, it's great. It feels like a family. People are kind of, you know, in the trenches, so to speak, depending on the, the type of film it is, but but yeah, it can be a really great experience. I've been on huge sets that are also really warm and friendly. So it really just depends on the crew. You know, that's a huge factor of just like making it feel approachable and warm and the people that are kind of up top as well. So it's always a mixed bag and you never really know where you're going to get. But American Dreamer was a very friendly set and I had a lot of laughs, which was great. Because it kind of like when you're when people are funny, it sort of like makes your shoulders drop and you can kind of relax a bit, which is good. Yeah. And like you said, so this was filmed because it was back in, I think I looked up, it was like 2021 that you guys actually worked yeah. on the movie, right? So it must yeah. be nice just to to finally get to to share, you know, this project with the rest of the world, just with, you know, everything that was going on with like the pandemic and stuff like that. So how are you feeling yeah. just finally uh, getting this project out to everybody now? I mean, it's great. It's been a long time coming, of course. I think shooting you know, the pandemic was still, especially in Canada, really strong. And there was huge restrictions still and a lot of fear. And that's a tough environment to feel creative in. And I think everyone did their best to kind of like put it out of their heads and of course be safe and follow protocol. But um, it feels like a lifetime ago. Like, I don't know how you feel about like looking back on the pandemic, but I'm like, I don't even remember it. Like, it's so strange. Yeah, no, I was just talking. Funny enough, like mentioned that like I was actually just having a discussion that happened to go into this earlier and I was just saying, wow, I can't believe it was four years ago where everything kind of started. I'm like, to me, it seems like it's only, I don't know, been like two years. Like it still yeah. seems so, so recent. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, um, it was a surreal time for everybody, obviously. And then trying to work on a set and you're wearing masks and there's like distance and, um, you're getting like swabbed up your nose every day there's it's a bit right. of a it causes some adrenaline and anxiety i think if you're not even aware of it and so the fact that the movie not only got finished <laughs> without yeah. a big catastrophe is like an incredible accomplishment of its own but also just that everybody was able to show up and do their best given the circumstances um, i'm very proud of that for sure 
And what does it mean to, to kind of, I guess, like follow up on that too? What does it mean to be a project, a part of a project like this where you're delivering, you know, laughs, you know, to audiences? It definitely has like its serious moments too, but there's a good amount of laughs in the film where the world has been through so much over the past like couple of years. I, I myself, like, I think like comedies over these past few years are just so important to kind of offer like escapism to a, to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Laughing is, is, medicine. I really believe that. And um, anytime you're, I think sometimes being an actor can feel a little bit selfish if I'm being totally honest. And so what I feel so lucky for in my career thus far is like working in comedy, I've been able to see firsthand what that means to people. And, um, you know, we all want to feel purposeful in our jobs. And so if you can bring some levity, especially right now when things are tough and have been tough for a while, uh, it helps you feel like, okay, this isn't just about me as an actor trying to like hustle and get the work. It's like, I'm putting something into into the world that's positive and is bringing a, a lightness and this movie has such a great message. It makes you think, but again, it's not too heavy handed and um, I hope that it's meaningful for people and I hope that it gives people a bit of a break. No, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And I was going to ask you, you kind of touched on it like a little bit there. I was going to say, you've done American Dream or Letter Kenny. Um, you know, how has working on comedies like these different projects over the past few years, how have they kind of helped you personally, like as a, as a person, just kind of working through these times too? Definitely helps. I mean, <laughs> being around funny, creative people is like such a blessing. And, um, uh, I do love the dramatic side of acting as well. Don't get me wrong. I think there's um, so much fun actually and beauty in that as well. In humanity, yada, yada. But um, it is like a bit of a nice break to go to set and things are pretty light because God, life is hard enough, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, and is there anything to kind of, to wrap things up, Michelle, is there anything else that you would like to say about your experience of, of working on this project and what you kind of hope that, you know, fans watching the film take away from it? I think this is um, a wonderful opportunity to watch two of our greats, Shirley MacLaine and Peter Dinklage, um, take center stage in such a beautiful way and play off of each other and showcase a different type of love story that we're not maybe always used to seeing um, in a way that I found really beautiful. And I hope that people are moved by it. I hope they have a giggle and I hope that they leave thinking a little bit about their own wants and needs. Well, Hey, Michelle, I just want to say thank you so much for your time, you know, to, to talk about the film. Uh, you can catch the movie. It's in uh, limited release theaters and you can also catch it on, on demand. I uh, really appreciate your time, Michelle. It was great talking to you and um, yeah, hope to talk to you again in the future. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too.